have a number of electrons and protons in your nucleus. It's newly charged with atom. Ion is its name. Welcome to the first video, the Chemical Earth module. Well, doing this video, I cover the very first dot point, which says identify the difference between elements, compounds, and mixtures in terms of the particle theory. So what we have to do, identify just means we need to name. So we need to name the difference between elements, compounds, and mixtures, and relate that back to the particle theory. So before I start, I'll quickly go over what the particle theory actually is. And the particle theory is all about matter. So anything that has matter has to have mass. So most of the things around us have some sort of mass. And what this particle theory is actually saying is that anything that has matter or mass have to consist of particles. And these particles can be either elements or compounds or a mixture of elements and compounds. And that's what we'll discuss in this stop point. And first I'll show you the periodic table and you might remember that from year 9 or 10 chemistry. And the periodic table of elements has all of these elements in it. So the first part is the difference between elements, compounds and mixtures. Now if we look at, for example, gold and oxygen and we think, you know, are they elements, compounds or mixtures? Well, here in this case we've got gold here, we've got AO, AU, sorry. AU stands for, is a symbol for gold. So this is actually on the periodic table of elements. So therefore gold is an element. And oxygen is also here. Oxygen is right here. So O for oxygen is also an element because it's on the periodic table of elements. So O or it can come as either as oxygen or as O2, which is oxygen gas. Both of these are elements because they come from this table. Whereas carbon dioxide, if we were to try to find carbon dioxide on this table, you wouldn't be able to do that because there's no carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is not a, a element. Carbon dioxide is actually a compound. But we can find carbon here, and we can find oxygen. And carbon dioxide just means carbon is that C for carbon, and oxygen, so dioxide means there's two oxygen in the extra structure. So carbon dioxide is CO2, and that's something we call a compound. And I go over what a compound is in a second, but compounds are more than one different type of atom. And then what is a mixture? Well, for example, if you look at Coke, I mean, obviously you can't find Coke on the actual periodic table, Coca-Cola, or you won't be able to find it just simply by putting one or two elements together because Coke is a mixture. And what that means is there's lots of different things in there. So for example, there will be some CO2, some carbon dioxide in there, but there'll also be some glucose, which is C6H12O6, and there's going to be some water, some H2O. So there's going to be lots of different compounds and elements that make up this Coke. So Coke is a mixture. That's what I go over in this top point. We have to be able to differentiate between elements, compounds, and mixtures. First, I'll go again over what elements are. Now, the example I gave was, for example, at gold and oxygen. These are both elements. Now, for example, gold, that was the symbol AU. And we can find a symbol AU on the actual periodic table. That's a stands by itself. And oxygen, we can also find oxygen on the periodic table, as I showed earlier, and that is also an element. Now we can find it as O or as O2. And most of the time in nature, we find it as O2. Now, with elements, we often call them pure substances as well. Pure substances. And the reason why is because it only has one type of atom in the actual structure. Now these can be joined together like, for example, this oxygen, there will be two oxygen molecules joined together, two oxygen atoms joined together to make an oxygen molecule. So this is how this would look. And this is actually a oxygen molecule. But it's still an element because there's still only one type of atom, which is the oxygen atom. Or it can stand by itself, as we mentioned earlier. For example, here, there's only one gold atom making that gold. And that itself here is also an element. So it can either be joined together or by itself, as long as it's just the actual pure substance we're talking about. Those are the elements. Whereas compounds, on the other hand, is compounds, we've got, have, they have to have more than two different types of atoms attached together. So for example, carbon dioxide. If I write the actual formula, it's C, because there's one carbon in it, and O2, CO2. But these are combined, they're attached. And what I mean there is they have bonds which attach together. So this here is a bond. In this case, it's actually a double bond. But you can see they're actually attached together. And this is called a covalent bond. And we'll go over covalent bonds more in the future. But covalent bonds just means that there's actually a proper structure which should bind these together. Now, carbon dioxide is a compound because they are more than two different types. We've got oxygen and carbon. 
atoms in one structure. Now glucose, this is the same idea. In this case, we've got six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. And they're also they're connected for these covalent bonds. So just like with the example beforehand, you can imagine these white bonds here, which are between the structures. So this is a compound, because there's more than one different types of atoms. There's carbon, there's hydrogen, and there's oxygen, and they're all bonded together. Now the last example is also compound, sodium chloride. Another word for sodium chloride is actually table salt. But table salt is slightly different because they're not bonded together for that strong bond I mentioned earlier. They're bonded for a different bond because what happens here, we have Na+, which is a positive ion, and we'll go over those terms more in the next couple of videos as well, and chlorine, which is a negative ion. And what actually holds these together is not the kind of bond that we had earlier, where these are just these covalent bonds, but an ionic bond. And what ionic bond is, is just the attraction between positive and negative. So positive and negative, make sure that there's an attraction. It's just like a magnet, like positive part of the magnet attracts the negative part, and that's what we call an ionic bond. So ionic bond is attraction between a positive and negative ion, whereas the other ones were just between different atoms which have that strong connection in their actual structure. Right? So compounds have to have two different types of atoms. That's the difference between elements and compounds. And there's two different types. We mentioned them. There is the molecular compound, and then there's the ionic compound. Molecular compound was, for example, our carbon dioxide. And molecules are just anything that have these covalent bonds. So these ones here. So this would have been, so CO2 would be an example of a molecular compound. Right, so ionic compounds is where they have these plus and minus, and that's the thing that keeps them together, that holds them together. And that would be, for example, our sodium chloride. But we'll go over those concepts of molecular compounds and ionic compounds more in the future. Whereas mixtures, in mixtures we have not just one different kind of compound or element, but for example, if this were Coke, so Coke here, you can see there are water molecules, glucose molecules, and carbon dioxide molecules, all in the same area. So a mixture is just any area, and then if there is more than one different type in it, one different type of compound or one different type of element, that makes it a mixture. So if you drink Coke, 90% of Coke is H2O, is water, but there's also going to be some glucose in there, and it's going to be some carbon dioxide. The bubbles come from the carbon dioxide, so the, so the bubbles. And our sweetness comes from the glucose. So Coke is a good example of a mixture because they're all, so with, with the actual mixtures, it means that it consists of a number of compounds and or elements. And these don't have to be bonded together independently, but they're just, so there's a couple of water molecules swimming around there, might be a couple of glucose molecules, and a couple of carbon dioxide molecules. Put all of them together make up a mixture. And same with oil as well. Oil, so this here, you might think it's just all the same stuff, the same elements and the same compounds, but there are lots of different types of elements and compounds. So lots of different types of elements and compounds. There are actually 20 to 30 different types. So for example, there's a bit of gas in there, methane gas, there'd be octane, which is petrol, and longer just chain carbon as well. So the oil is not an example of a mixture. But I'll also quickly go over how you can separate them. So when it comes to elements, you can't separate elements from each other. So gold is the smallest unit. There's no physical or chemical way of separating elements. Whereas with compounds, you can't physically, you can't separate them. So for example, if I were to, H2O, H2O is a compound. If I were to heat, which is a way of physically a physical change, if I try, try to change it by heating it, all it would happen is it would go from solid or liquid to gas. So it hasn't changed the actual structure, it just changed the, the state it's in. So physical, we can't do, but we can chem chemically change it. And we'll go through something called electrolysis later. Chemically changing means just we put electricity through it, and then eventually, it, there's, for example, hydrogen pops out, and it's two different it's two different actual substances. So compounds, we can't physically separate them, but we can chemically separate them. But with mixtures, we can both physically and chemically separate them. So for example, when it comes to coke, if we were to heat the coke, we would have water evaporating, so water would leave because of evaporation, and the carbon dioxide would escape because it's just gas, and we might be only left with some glucose. 
So glucose would be so we can separate these for both physical, which is heating, and chemical means. Whereas compounds, we only can separate them for chemical means, and elements, we, can only, we can't separate them for either chemical or physical means, because they're the smallest unit, more or less. So what I, know, what I want to know for this dot point is, we should identify the difference between elements, compounds, and mixtures. And the difference where the elements are the pure substances. These have to be, have only one type of atom. They can be joined together in molecules, for example, or an oxygen molecule, which is two oxygens, but they have to be only one type of atom. And obviously, all of the elements in the periodic table, if they're by themselves, they're all elements. Whereas compounds have to have more than two different types. So for example, carbon dioxide has carbon and oxygen. Glucose has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it. Sodium chloride has sodium and chloride in it. And it's over there's two different types of compounds. There's molecular compounds, which has these strong bonds, these covalent bonds, which I'll go over soon. And ionic compounds, which deals with these ionic attractions between the positive and negative. Both are types of compounds. And the mixtures is if we have lots of different types of elements and compounds, all in the same area. So if example is Coke, we've got our water that makes up most of that Coke. We've got some glucose that give for the sweetness. And we've got some carbon dioxide, which make up the bubbles. And all that in the same area is a mixture. But yeah, I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.